the madman. Power alone is not to be feared. Fear instead those who wield it. News of the next expansion has finally been released. It's going to be called Knights of the Frozen Throne. Uh, it's going to release on August, sometime during August, and it'll be 135 cards. The idea of the expansion is that all the heroes die, and they actually have a Death Knight form now. Uh, so that's going to be nine of the legendary cards in the set. Uh, the other mechanic is going to be a new keyword called Lifesteal. When damage is dealt by the card that has Lifesteal, your hero gains that much health. There are eight free missions that come with this expansion, and once you complete all eight of them, you get three free packs. It's said that the missions are unlike the battles you fought in the past, but don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll destroy them with ease, as usual. <laughs> and if you complete the prologue mission, you actually get a free legendary hero as well. More card reveals will begin on July 24th. I happen to like the time period where the cards are being shown the most and you get to think about all the possibilities of them, so I hope we get a leak or two or a few from certain sources uh, before that date. But for now, we're going to review the five cards that were first revealed. Deathstalker Rexar, a new type of card, a hero card. It's six mana. And then you gain five armor, uh, on the bottom right it says that. Uh, you complete the text in the box, deal two damage to all enemy minions, and then you replace your hero power. And the hero power that you replace it with is pretty exciting, it's called Build a Beast. Uh, so how it works is it's gonna add the mana cost together, it's gonna add the attack power together, it's gonna add the health values together, it's gonna add the text together. Beasts are discovered from your hunter class, and the neutral pool, so not every class. Uh, the first beast you discover is going to be ones with text. So for example, Rat Pack, Fiery Bat, Infested Wolf, from neutral, for example, Dire Wolf Alpha. The second pick is going to be cards with just vanilla stats or with keywords. So examples of that would be Stone Tusk Boar, which has only charge, Bloodfen Raptor, which is a vanilla minion. Both of these minions are going to cost five or less uh, because the maximum mana you can spend in a game is 10, and I guess that's just an elegant way to do it. You'll be able to craft any sort of contraption uh, between two and 10 mana, unless there is a zero mana beast in this expansion, in which case one to 10 mana. So uh, with all that explanation out of the way, let's talk about whether or not this card is actually good. Uh, it strikes me as a very Jiraxi type effect, or a very quest warrior effect, where if the game goes long enough and you build enough beasts, you're just going to win, because build a beast brings so much value to the table. Uh, you are drawing a really good card for two mana, basically like a super life tap, without going into fatigue. And like when you add two cards together, that tends to create a card that's really good. In fact, you could argue that it's better than drawing one card because you're basically drawing two cards and adding them together. So that's how good the hero power is. It says basically draw two cards. Not to mention, uh, it's costed really efficiently because the battle cry is deal two damage to all enemy minions. That's the consecration ability. And you mix that with the five armor, which is iron hide. No one plays iron hide, but hey. So technically if you added those together, that's already worth five mana. The hero power is just icing on the cake in theory. If your hero power becomes build a beast, you're going in a completely different direction, which is why I implied that this card would be better for uh, control hunter decks or hunter decks which plan to go for the late game because you clearly want to use this hero power for quite a few times in order to obtain the most value in a drawn out game. So what's gonna matter about this? Uh, whether or not hunters get some sort of viable form of healing Maybe if they get a few lifesteal cards in there, you can get enough health to play around with build a beast. Not to mention, the hero card itself also comes with some armor, which naturally lets you survive later into the game as well. So, 
hey, it all synergizes really well. We'll see whether or not this works. But of course, as the mayor of Valia Town, I would like to build a beast. Uh, we're going to build a better beast. We're going to make some great beasts. Bitter Tide Hydra plus Stone Tusk Boar equals 6 mana 9-9 nine, nine charge. Vicious Fledgling plus Stone Tusk Boar equals Charging Vicious Fledgling. Ooh. Dispatch Kodo plus Stubborn Gastropod equals Kill Anything because you're dealing damage and the card itself has Poisonous. What are some of the ideas for build a beast that you can think of? Post in the comments below. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face saying that. Speaking of the other mechanic in this expansion, uh, we've got Lifesteal. When you deal damage with Lifesteal, your hero heals for the amount of damage dealt. So, Chill Blade Champion. When I first looked at this card, the first thing I reacted on it was, Oh, it's a worse Stormwind Knight. Or, why would you ever play this card over True Silver Champion? But, don't let this poor stat line fool you. Or, or maybe it is bad, but we're being optimistic at first. Uh, this card has the potential uh, to basically deal infinite damage and deal and heal you infinitely. Like most minions only have the potential to deal infinite damage, but this minion can deal infinite damage and heal you infinitely. You're doing an aggro matchup against an aggro matchup. Uh, on turn four, you play Chill Blade Champion. You hit the face. Uh, it's sometimes becomes a face war between the two. Uh, the opponent has to trade into your Chill Blade Champion because if you're dealing three a turn and you're healing three a turn, that usually out races, outpaces whatever they can do. So instead of just charging your Chill Blade Champion into the minion, you charge the Chill Blade Champion into their face, and then they trade a minion into your Chill Blade Champion, which basically has taunt in that matchup. In that sense, Chill Blade Champion will have dealt six damage and will have gained you six health because it'll deal the damage twice uh, and it will therefore heal twice. That suddenly seems not bad at all. And suppose you actually get Spike Ridge Steed on this thing. Uh, it becomes a 5-8 card. You charge the opponent, you gain five. Uh, they hit it with like maybe two minions since they can't kill it with just one and you've gained another five and then you have a Stegadon. Buffing cards with charge is generally good. I'm sure buffing cards with lifesteal is also good. The main problem I see with this lifesteal is if you're playing an aggressive deck, that's usually when you want to charge face. Do aggressive decks really care that much about lifesteal? To be determined. Uh, spells can also have lifesteal and this might be really big for a certain class right now which is weak because it doesn't have enough health gain resources. Warlock. For Priest, uh, they're getting basically lifesteal on a whirlwind effect. Uh, this card theoretically gains you 14 health if both sides have 7 minions, but it can do even better than that. Let's suppose you play Blood Mage Thanos and then you play Spirit Lash and there are 14 minions on the board, then you're gaining 28. Is it worth it to play a whirlwind type effect in a deck which doesn't run Acolyte of Pain or Execute. Well, that remains to be seen if uh, Priest can possibly get more cards to synergize with this. Uh, they recently got a really strong card that healed for a lot, Binding Heal, healing 5 on a minion, 5 to yourself, and that card saw absolutely no play whatsoever. So do Priest really need healing? Eh, maybe not. Do they need a 2 mana whirlwind? Eh, probably not. Uh, but we'll see. Next up, we've got Shallow Gravedigger. This card is very reminiscent of Stonehill Defender. Uh, Stonehill Defender is a 3 mana 1 4. Battle Cry, Discover a Taunt Minion. Uh, downside of this card, Shallow Gravedigger, is you're not discovering a Death Rattle, you are simply adding one to your hand. And it's a Death Rattle instead of getting it immediately. So those are two major downsides. Oh, here's a third downside, too. Uh, the 3 1 stat line is probably worse than the 1-4 taunt stat line. How good this card is going to be depends on whether or not there are more death rattle interactions and whether or not the pool of death rattle cards increases immensely, but but currently I'm not that optimistic about this stat line for its mana cost. And finally we have Prince Keleseth, limitation Reno effect, where you build your deck a certain way and then you get a huge benefit. By the way, note that says if your deck has no two cost cards, uh, similar to the Reno decks, you can put duplicates in your deck, 
you can put two cost cards in your deck. You just have to make sure that your deck doesn't actually have any two cost cards at the time that you play Prince Keliseth. Uh, if you manage to play this card on turn two, you'll usually have a huge advantage. Now I happen to go ahead and do the math for you. So if you're going first and you aggressively mulligan for Prince Keliseth, which means you literally mulligan every card that is not Prince Keliseth, uh, then the chances that you're going to have this card by turn two is 25.9%. If you're going second and you mulligan hard for Prince Keliseth, that means you're only going to have a 32.3% chance of having Keliseth as a play on turn two. Now, this card doesn't have to be played on turn two for it to be good, uh, but it diminishes rather quickly because of the limited amount of turns there are in Hearthstone. Also, this doesn't buff the cards in your hand, unlike Mistcaller. It turns out that a lot of decks out there do run two cost cards, and I wouldn't recommend actually running this with two cost cards in your deck, kind of similar to how you wouldn't really run Reno decks with uh, duplicates. It's been done before, I've done it before, but the thing about Reno is it's way different. Uh, usually Reno decks have a lot of card draw in them, and usually, and Reno costs six. Uh, Prince Kalisith is like a card you want to play on too. It's one of those cards where if you actually manage to play on turn two though, your chances of winning the game go up by so much. It feels insane to uh, try to run a card that's so good only specifically early on as a one of, and you have to compromise your two costs for it. But hey, maybe. It certainly feels like Prince Keliseth would need to fit into a very particular deck. And one very particular deck that it might fit into is Quest Hunter, which wants to put so many one drops in their deck. Now will Quest Hunter actually be a good deck? Uh, that's dependent on the one drops in the set, but also a probably not, but we'll see. And that's your first look at Knights of the Frozen Throne. I would love to review more cards for you in the new future. However, it appears that card reveals are only beginning on July 24. We'll see if there's anything in between here and then, but for now, consider this a very exciting first look at the next expansion of Hearthstone. <laughs>